it's Lauren here with Lauren Elizabeth Fine Art. I have another animal painting tutorial for you today for stress relief. And today's tutorial will be a sweet little Easter bunny. I did sort of a little poll on Facebook. It was between a bunny rabbit and a lamb and I chose a bunny and I thought it was perfect for this Easter holiday. This painting is really great for beginner artists because it doesn't take a lot of paint. It is on an 11 by 14 canvas, so not too small, not too big, and it really did take me under 30 minutes to complete. I would also like to announce this awesome new thing that I have just created, the online Animal Art Masterclass. It is open for pre-registration, an ongoing, in-depth, exclusive class that allows students who are creatives and animal lovers to get regular animal painting tutorials for beginner through advanced artists that can be downloaded straight from your phone and watched at any point in time. And if you're really interested in this and these tutorials have been helpful for you, I have something really great planned. So make sure you check out that out in the links below. But without further ado, let's get painting. Alright guys, all the materials are in the description box below and now's the time to get comfy and ready to paint. I'm starting out with a light gray, which is just simply a little bit of black with a good amount of white. And I'm using this with my detail brush to sketch out my rabbit. Uh, I have all the links to reference photos for this rabbit in the description box below. So make sure you check that out just to get a good reference photo for your little bunny. I also want to say I have been painting my canvas with either a gesso or a white paint, acrylic paint before painting. And I've noticed that the paint is just so much more easily spread throughout the canvas evenly and more pigmented and that is just a little tip that I would recommend for you. Um, I just, for this one, I just use acrylic white paint and I cover the whole thing just with a thin layer, not too much, and I would really recommend you doing that before you paint any of your paintings. So here I'm starting with the forehead and now I'm making the cheeks. And you just notice I'm, I'm doing this super lightly. I'm really not pushing hard. I barely touch the water. I only touch the water when I notice that my paint is just having trouble being pushed around the canvas. Then I'll, I'll wash it out in the, uh, in the water. But I'm just laying down the, the basic shapes and lines of this bunny rabbit. And I had a lot of fun. This was really relaxing. Getting my mind and my hand in the moment was uh, very, very fun. Plus, it's this sketch is never supposed to be perfect, and we just add upon our detail as we paint, as we go on painting, and that always gets me really um, loosened up for a good paint. You can make these ears as short or as long as you want, but I decided that I wanted to make one ear straight up and then one flappy ear. I just think that adds a lot more character to the painting. And so this is the right ear that I created straight. And I just added a little fold to it and then on the other side you can choose to make both ears straight up that is actually a little bit easier as far as sketching but it's not too bad making a little fold is just like a, a little half triangle on one side of the ear
It's important that you get the main sketch in for the ears, the bunny ears first, before adding the flowers and the eggs to the, the forehead. So I'm just, I just basically let that dry and now I'm moving on to the body, but it's, uh, we're gonna go back over that, those ears so that we can make the leaves and the blossoming flowers and the eggs. So I start making my first leaf and then I make just a blob, a circle for the where I'm going to put the rose and then I'm laying down a few more leaves, just laying down shapes and it's okay if this can be a little hard to discern because there's the bunny ear sketch behind it, but you just try your best and we're just going to layer over it with our colors in just a bit. Now bunnies come in all shapes and sizes so you are welcome to add spots. You can get really creative, add some stripes. I just know that I wanted a nice big white spot on his belly, on her belly, <laughs> and so I added that just right in the middle. Okay, so for our next color, I am again making a gray. This time it's gonna be a lot lighter than the gray that we just used to sketch the bunny. And I'm using my fat brush, making this a darker gray. This is not gonna be the lightest gray that we use because we're just gonna start layering from dark to light. And I'm just placing this gray in the areas that the sun is not really hitting as much as the other areas that we're going to have highlights on. And so starting with the rabbit's cheek and then we're going to move to different parts of the body and the ears. My main goal whenever I start a painting is to, once I finish the sketch, is to just place down the main colors from darkest to light over the canvas. And by the way, you can make their, your background uh, a color other than white. 
I decided to just stick with the white uh, coat of paint, the light layer of white paint that I made. I was actually just gonna make a blue background, but I said, I just figured I keep making blue backgrounds, so I kept it white. So you're welcome to, before you start this step, you're welcome to paint any color background you would like. Now take note, I am leaving it white around the eyes and then I'm painting this gray right in between the bridge of the nose and around the cheeks. And just so you know, I actually added white, more white to the gray that I originally made because I kind of thought that it was a little too dark. So you can always, we're just gonna be building upon the gray that we previously made just by either adding black or white. We are going to be using this gray for majority of this painting. We're just putting down that first gray tone, so make enough of it. And if you're unsure as to where the sun would be hitting the bunny, just watch me and where I place this gray. Just another little tip, make sure that as you're placing this gray down that you cover the dark line, the dark gray that we made previously. You, you can keep it if you want but I'm covering over that outline as best I can. Now, as I paint this, I am just thinking about, of course, Easter things and memories from Easter. And I would just love to hear any memories or experiences that, or traditions that you have every Easter. My family um, didn't, really go to church I would go with my neighbors but I just had many many memories uh, Easter memories with my next door neighbors when I was younger and yeah I would love to hear your experiences So, funny thing, I did tell you to cover up the dark outline around the rabbit, but I, in many parts, as you can see, left that. So, I'm just going to say, do what you think looks right. I, I left it in some parts, but then did not in other areas. So, what, be led by how you feel and by what you think looks best. Yay, I am happy to be done with that gray. And now we are gonna move on to adding white to that original gray to brighten it up. And we're gonna start lightening up our gray tones and adding that to just some parts where the sun is hitting. I use the side of my fat brush to sort of start creating a little bit of it, the, the fur look. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect, especially because this is the first couple layers, but I always turn my brush at an angle to create that fine line for fur, for animal hair. 
and if you want really fine fur that's when you add a lot of water to your brush and then you wipe it on your towel and then you just add the small spit of paint and then you flatten your brush really well and that's how I make really fine lines using a fat brush than the edge of it. I think that's why I do animal portraits because I really enjoy doing fur and just layering color with fur and detail. I just find doing skin and humans, human skin is every person has such different skin tones, but you kind of have to make it pretty even. And I just find that really stressful and <laughs> just difficult for me so I, I don't really enjoy painting people even though I will I much much rather prefer doing fur and definitely feathers and scales and those things are just so much fun for me Okay, so once again, I am adding my white to that previous gray. Waste not, I don't like to waste paint, and this is a great way to do that. And I'm gonna do, yet again, another layer of highlight over top what we just painted. And this time I'm definitely focusing on trying to make that hair. I am placing the highlights around the face, definitely around the lips and nose, around the eyes. I really want to keep those eyes as light as I can. I'm really loving the fangs. I feel like if you were to step away from this bunny rabbit right now, it looks like the bunny has vampire fangs. It's really funny. But you don't really want that. I think that um, if you have a moment right now, you can, and if this is on your canvas, definitely make some dark gray to fill underneath that. We're going to be keeping that part dark. And so that's important that you don't have fangs on your rabbit like mine. Now this ear may look a little confusing because I have a light highlight on the very edge of one side of the ear and then a light highlight on the inside edge of the other side of the ear. So just make note of that. You don't want to put that second edge on the outside of the ear, if that makes any sense. You're doing that second edge of light highlight gray closer to the inside of the ear. If you chose to have one big white belly like a spot in the middle of the rabbit's belly like I have. We are just taking straight white and adding that to the center spot. But like I said at the very beginning, if you added stripes or spots, take this time to paint those right now. I also apply this white to the little tiny bunny tail that I've added in the back. I know this is quite random, but I want to point out a sweet little gift that I got from both a friend and fellow YouTuber here on my channel. Um, Jessica Esteban, she 
is just the sweetest little artist here. I, um, she created this a wonderful portrait of me and also knows that I love roses so much. And so she bought me this beautiful rose frame. And guys, I just wanna say that I appreciate other artists so much and this girl just has so much talent. So definitely um, thank you so much, Jessica. And because I have a uh, white background, I couldn't really see that white part that I made, which is why I took a dark gray and created an outline around the bunny tail. And with that gray that I made, I actually used that to put in the, just a bit more contrast on the bunny. So I took black, I took some white, I added that to the original gray that I made and I'm using my detail brush to apply that to really dark areas. So right underneath the chin, be careful you don't make it too dark. Black is a very strong color, so you don't need very much. And so I'm just fixing the teeth. I don't want those bunny teeth anymore. And I'm adding more shadows to areas that the sun does not hit. I am so excited for color. <laughs> we are finally adding colors other than gray and starting with our yellow. I love this Naples yellow. This is one of my favorite colors. And I'm just adding a little bit of white to this. And this is gonna be the color that I use with my detail brush to paint in the eggs. Of course, you don't have to use this color. Eggs can be blue or pink or whatever color. I just didn't use pink um, or any colors related to my rose or my leaves because I didn't want to kind of clash that. I wanted the, a color that would really make those eggs pop. Um, yellow and gray I just think look so good together so I decided to make both eggs that color. And I really like the outline of gray around the eggs. I, I, I think that just really helps define where the eggs are on top of the rabbit head so you can keep that um, I just basically tried to keep that line as even and symmetrical as I could as I was painting those in and then I'm just gonna wash my brush out dry it and then we're gonna move on to our next color which is green I want to add a little bit of Naples yellow to this green. I don't want to just take straight colors from my paint palette. I always want to mix it with something. That just gives it uh, more pigment. It helps to spread the paint a lot better on your canvas. And I want to make this pretty dark. I, I Roses have really dark, rich green leaves. And I even added a little bit of blue to this. And so I am just using that blue to paint in the, the leaves. That's the first color of the leaves right over top the eggs. And as I did this, I saw areas that I really wanted to add more leaves to. So, I mean, guys, by all means, you can cover the whole head with leaves, just leaves. You don't have to add flowers. I want you to be really creative with this. I, I wanted uh, little leaves peeking out from behind the ear. You can do the same. You can have vines growing up that ear. I mean, get, get creative with it.
So the second little vine that's coming from the left ear, I wanted a bit lighter. And so I just took that same green that we made and added some more uh, Naples yellow. And so that's what I used to paint that those leaves on the side. Alright, so now that I'm done with the leaves, I'm now going to wash up my brush and move on to the rose. I am taking my red with a little bit of my pink. I never want to just add straight red. I always want to add some sort of color to it, but I kind of wanted to make this dark, so I added more red than pink. And just placing down the first layer of this rose You'll see that I expand the rose just like I did the leaves. I don't really, I didn't really know exactly how I wanted to make this rose, but I wanted to make a little bit bigger than what I originally sketched it out as. So while I'm on my red, I just added white to my red, the color that I made for the rose. And I'm just painting the inside of the ears where there's a lot of blood flow, so it's definitely quite pink. And you are welcome to cover up that those black outlines I did that for the most part. To create a bit of a shadow inside the rabbit's ear, I just added a little bit of brown to my red. And I'm just placing this with my fat brush right on the inside of the ear, going about a third of the way up.
So now I'm taking my black and dark brown to create the, just to define my eyes a little bit better. I lost them a little bit when I was applying the light gray. I also use the same dark color to outline the nose and the mouth just making sure that I just define that because you can kind of get that lost a little bit when you're doing the other grays I just define the mouth I opened up the mouth a little bit and the chin I then use that color to create eyelashes that I just use the very tip of my detail brush to create these tiny little eye eyelashes. I wanted to make them pretty long. So I wanted to add a little bit more colors to the coat of this rabbit. And so I just created a grayish brown with white, brown, and a little bit of black. And just to create a little bit more personality in that fur, in that fur coat, <laughs> I wanted something other than just straight gray. And so I added a good amount of white, just a little bit of brown, very little bit of black, and I used that in just random areas. Just wanted to create a little bit more color in that fur. If you look back to my other tutorials, you'll just notice that I'll place random spots of a similar color just to kind of add more character, more life to the painting. And I just think this brown kind of adds a little bit more. And you don't have to cover the whole bunny. We still want to keep that bunny gray, but in just random spots with your detail brush. So now I am using literally straight white. I'm not adding anything to that white to create the major highlights of this rabbit. So I'm placing it around the eyes, definitely around the nose, around the lips, on the belly. There's even a small little outline just right around the top of the nose, very tiny. And as if you just watch me, you'll just notice exactly where I put it making uh, it kind of look like fur at the same time. Thank you. 
If you don't know anything about complementary colors, it's just basically colors that complement each other so without making them look muddy. So for example, the complementary color of red is green, and so if I wanted to darken my red, I just add a little bit of green to it. If I want to brighten my green, I'm sorry, darken my green, I just add a little bit of red to it. And I do this for creating the inside of a rose. So I don't have to use black and I don't have to muddy it up with brown. I just add some dark green. We are almost done guys. We just have these sweet little Easter eggs to finish and I'm just taking straight white to create on one egg a zigzag design and then polka dots on the other. But like always, you can always do your own design, do a different color, add more eggs. It is up to you. I'm also taking straight white and using my, I actually used a bit smaller brush. Um, this is a flat brush and it's a bit smaller than my, the bigger fat brush that I was using before. Um, it still has that thin line that I can use the edge of to make whiskers. And so all I'm doing is taking straight white and just using the edge of that to create the whiskers. And I also take straight white to create these tiny, with my detail brush, I take my detail brush to create the tiny little white highlights inside the center of the rabbit's eye. I woke up in the middle of the night mm -hmm. na, na, na. And I wondered how you're always right It gets me I couldn't see you what you saw in And for the last and final step I wanted to just give a little bit more character to these leaves and so I created a light green with a lot of Naples yellow and a little bit of green. And with my detail brush, I just created these lines on both sides of the leaf. This kind of has a little bit of a illustrator's look to it as opposed to, you know, a realistic leaf. And I kind of like that about it. So make sure this is really light green enough so that you can see the contrast on the dark green and just create lines on both sides of each leaf and yeah it 
It is hard to share my thoughts. Ooh, na na na. It's like cutting a wound in a bleeding heart. It gets me. But I know that you need it all. Ooh, na na na. Just give me some time, 'cause I need to know that you're staying. Ooh. When I look back, I can see. Well, guys, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this relaxing tutorial. If you have any questions, be sure to message me or email me. All the links will be down below. And guys, I look forward to seeing you at the next tutorial. Thanks again. Bye.